Hey everybody, Dave here, and what I wanted to talk to you today about was just a real quick tip with the HD1 engine in the Core Chronos. So the idea here is that I wanted to introduce this idea of format. Um, the format is basically when you when you look at the online definition, it's basically described as um, the harmonic properties or the harmonic emphasis on a particular sound. So for example, if I were to take a vocal sample, uh, here, let's just grab this one. Okay, um, and let's make it just a little bit more pretty. I just want to add a little bit of this and a little bit of this. There. So I've got a real straightforward kind of vocal sound. Okay, so when I'm talking about the formant, I'm talking about, again, the harmonic qualities or the harmonic properties of a sound. So under the tune, when we adjust the tune, what we're actually doing is we're adjusting uh, more or less the sample playback. So if I were to press middle C, and I start moving this around, so what I want you to focus on is the harmonic qualities of the sound. Don't worry about the pitch just yet, because we can fix that. So listen, when it goes up, it sounds a little bit more nasally. And when it goes down, it sounds like a little bit more throaty. Okay, so what's neat about this is that you can take basically almost any sample in the Kronos and manipulate the harmonic properties just based off of this tuning here. So the transposition, all that's going to do is choose where on the keyboard you play it. So for example, if I were to put this at 1200 um, and I play middle C, it'll be an octave above where I want it to be. So I can transpose it to minus 12, put it back to middle C. Now, this is the exact same as just playing somewhere else on the keyboard. And so all I've done is I've actually just played the three different C's. So I played an octave above, middle C, and an octave below middle C. So what's cool though is that it gives you the ability to hear the difference in terms of harmonic properties. Whoops. And so what's neat is that you can take the sample and manipulate kind of how it sounds without ever changing the filters or resonance or anything like that. So you can start with a sound that's closer to what you're looking for. So if you wanted a sound that was a little bit more throaty, we could do this. We could go minus 700, transpose it up seven, uh, whoops, up seven cents. And now we've got a slightly throatier sound compared to the original. Or if we wanted it a little bit thinner. So we bring it up an octave, so it's playing the samples at a higher rate, but then we're reducing where it happens on the keyboard. And so it sounds not necessarily thinner, but it has a different format or a different tonality about it. At any rate, try this with a bunch of different samples because we've got a bunch of different samples in the Chord Chronos. And some of them are going to respond differently, so some of them don't quite work this way. Um, let's take a listen to this one. So this one doesn't seem to make much difference at all. Probably, probably because it's using the same sample sound across the entire keyboard. Um, this choir sound actually comes from the Core Gem 1, as far as I understand. So it might have the same sample sound for every key. Which is why it's not making any difference. But for samples that come from the Core Chronos, or from uh, the M3 or the M50 or the Triton and so on, they might have multi-samples so that, you know, when you play a C it's going to sound different than the C below it because it's actually playing a different sample, you know, different sample altogether. So at any rate, I just wanted to share this really quickly with you. Give it a try. Try different sounds and see what come, what you can come up with that uh, might be a little bit different. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.